Yeah, it was, uh, yeah. Welcome to the 73rd Annual National Day of Prayer. It's just amazing to have so many people come out tonight. Hallelujah. Our big scripture for the 73rd National Day of Prayer is found in 2 Samuel 22, 29 through 31. It says, For thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a truth. By my God I have leaped over a wall. And as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. Got your trust in the Lord tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. We just thank the Lord for his goodness. At this time, I'd like to welcome the New Springfield Youth Impact Ministry Choir. Yeah. Oh! 
they are and their voice and if uh, any of you have had a long day already and maybe you came here to celebrate and be thanking God for the blessings that have been bestowed upon Pontiac. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Friends, I know over the last probably 30 years if you look up, there's a lot of light shining over Pontiac right now. This place is really starting to blossom in, in a way that the world will know we're here. And we're grateful. Amen. And as we heard that God is the lamp, in this passage from 2 Samuel, and in John, we hear that in the beginning was the Word, and that the Word became life, and that life was the life of the world. Lamp shining bright, showing us our way out of darkness, and we ask as we gather here today, that God would continue to lead all of our leadership, whether they come to us from government, from our schools, from our businesses, from our churches, from our civic associations, just from our families, when we gather together with neighbors in the community. When we see God's light, we can see truth in our midst, and that's what God uses to heal all of us. So I pray that as we begin this evening tonight giving thanks to God and praying uh, for God's healing presence and mercy over this community, that we would begin by knowing that God sent light to be among us, and God is lighting all the darkness. So let us see the darkness lit up with light through all the prayers that follow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 At this time, we'd like our honor roll student, Aaron Thompson, to please come and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Just press the buttons. Would everybody please stand 
and sing the national anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Praise God. At this time, let's welcome our Destiny Chasers from Destiny Faith Church. Thank you. 
Thank you. God bless you this evening, and I'm glad to see so many faces here to see different generations, to see the families gathered, and above all, to see the kids praising and worshiping. Why don't we give a praise to the Lord? Why don't we say thank you, Father, for what you're doing in our church, for what you're doing in our community, for what you're about to do during the last prayer, because there's something powerful that God is making, bringing something that God is working within our hearts. So as I was praying, as I was seeing the Lord's face about our families, the Lord reminded me that it all started with Him. In the beginning, when God created mankind, He gave them charge. He gave them responsibility. He told Adam and Eve to be fruitful, to multiply, to fill up the earth. It started with God because family is the foundation of God's purpose. It's the foundation of God's work. It's the foundation of how the Lord will reveal His glory through His people today and in this hour and in this time. So as we come and as we gather, we have to understand that that is why the attack is so strong against family. That is why the attack is so strong against those that will raise a godly seed. Because we agreed in the book of Malachi that God intended for a godly seed to arise, for a godly seed to be lifted up, that they would bring God's glory to the earth. Oh, my brothers and sisters, we have to pray and we have to seek the Lord's face as never before to understand that this is the hour and the season. Just as King David, in his battles, before he became king, oh, one time he lost his wife, his children, he lost all the possessions, he was persecuted, but he strengthened himself in the Lord. And in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 30, you can read the story, but as, the, as King David sought the Lord's face and was strengthened, he asked of the Lord, shall I pursue and will I overtake those that came and plundered my family, my house, and my land? And the Lord responded, because he sought the face, he believed, and he had a heart after the Lord. But when God answered, he said, you're not only going to pursue, you're going to overtake. Yeah. And you're not going to just overtake, you're going to recover everything that was taken. Oh, my brothers and sisters, let's lift up our hands and believe today that that which the enemy has been looking to take away is exactly what God is going to restore. Everything that has been lost, many of our families, many of our children, many of our youth, many of our young adults, a whole generation that is struggling in this time, that is looking for answers. Oh, they're turning to everything. But in this day and in the south, we pray, Lord, that you would open their hearts, that you would open their ears, that you would open their eyes, that they could begin to understand. Lord, that your spirit would bring the word and make them alive and bring that revelation and that understanding so that we can turn back to you, Father. You didn't call the family. You didn't call your people, Lord, so that they could be decimated, so that they could be plundered. You didn't call our households, oh, Father, and our marriages and our children and our youth and our young adults. You didn't call them so that they could be plundered. 
on there, Father, but you embrace them in this hour because you're lifting up a godly seed. You are lifting up a generation that's going to seek your face, that's going to believe in your word, that is going to stand in your truth and in your principles. You lifted a generation, Lord, and it's going to follow you and honor you. And because of that, Father, there's going to be such a blessing. There's going to be such a release and such a revival and such a deliverance coming, Lord, to this hour, to this time, to this society, to our community, to this city, Father. We are believing that you are restoring the hearts of fathers to their children, Lord, that we're not going to pursue and we're not going to chase after the things that take our attention, that drive us away from family, from home, from the from sowing the seed of your truth and your principles into our children's hearts. Father, we're crying out for the hearts of mothers, Lord, that they do not despair or give up in this day, but that they continue to pray and seek your face and believe, Lord, that that which they have sown in their children is exactly what they're going to reap, Lord, that they are sowing your faith, they're sowing truth, they're sowing your word and your principles because they're expecting to see that there's going to be deliverance in this day and in this hour. We pray for every church and every ministry, for every program that is reaching out to the community, Lord. This is the hour and the time in which you're going to help each and every one of them to retake that which the enemy had sought to destroy. But Father, no longer will the enemy plunder because you have told us and given us that charge that we will pursue, that we will overtake, and we will recover everything, Lord. Yes. Family, yes. children, you, young adults, Lord, grandchildren, there's grandparents believing here in this hour, Lord, and we are believing with them that you're going to restore and bring back everything, Lord, that the enemy sought. Yeah. Oh, Father, because you are the God Almighty, you're still seated on your throne, and above you, Lord, there's no one, no one and no authority, Father, but yours. And when you speak the word, Lord, things happen. When you speak deliverance, it happens, Lord. When you break the bonds and the chains, they are broken, Lord. And we thank you, Father, that we can believe you, that we can trust you, and that we can lean on you in this time and in this hour. Oh, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God bless you tonight. At this time, Pastor Andrea Ellis will be leading us in prayer for the church. Amen, amen, amen. Giving honor to the president of the Open County Ministerial Association, Pastor Parker, and of course to Pastor and Mrs. Matlock. Bishop Lee, Bishop McClellan, so many others that I've seen. Um, this is Causey, Pastor Burgess, and anybody that I've forgotten, Pastor Pate, to all of you, all the men and women of God everywhere, giving honor to you in Jesus' name. At Destiny Faith Church, we have an anthem, and our anthem is found in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Woo! So, we get excited when we hear the word of God. It goes this way, now, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let's pray. Holy Father, in the matchless, most holy name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this is the day that you've made. We're rejoicing and glad in it. Glad for this opportunity to come together to pray on this national day of prayer. Father, we know that you hear and answer prayer. And every day we pray, every day you answer so heavenly father right now i set myself in agreement with all of the churches around this city and across oakland county father god i thank you that the churches are houses that people can run into and find safety so father i pray for every single pastor and minister and evangelist and prophet and pastor and teacher all of the ministry gifts that strengthen the body of Christ, that the body of Christ can go forth to do the work of the ministry. Father God, strengthen these houses of prayer, oh God, that people can come in and find safety. They can come in and find the Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father God, I pray for unity across denominations, Father God, across churches, one mind, one strength, and no division. Father, I thank you that you don't see denomination. You see hearts. Yeah, Father, see our hearts as we stand together today in prayer, understanding that prayer changes everything. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much, makes dunamis power made available unto us all. So, Father God, I pray for the churches that they will be strong. I pray that the anointing flows from the head to the beard, to the skirt. 
the anointing from the pastor to the ministers, to the leaders, to the lay people, and it flows out into the community. Father God, cause the church to be the lighthouse in the places of darkness, that people will come in and find safety and find shelter in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that we call almost everybody in the city of Pontiac born again, saved by your spirit. Father, I thank you that you so love the world that you gave your only begotten Son, and whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Father, I thank you for sending your Son, Jesus. Jesus, I thank you for doing the work that you did on the cross. It's already done. It's already paid in full. All we have to do is receive it. So, Father, God calls the churches to bring the souls in and to go out into the community, go out into the harvest and bring the harvest in. The harvest is plenty as the laborers are few. So we pray for laborers that will go forth to bring in the harvest. Father, we will not wait for people to come into the church, but we will leave out of the church building and we will go bring those souls unto you. So Father God, Touch every pastor, Father God, and strengthen the pastor. Father, we pray for their weary arms, Father God. We pray for them in their times of vulnerability, their times of betrayal, their times of hurt. We pray for every pastor, Father God, that you will give them strength and you will give them encouragement, even now in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as a result, that same anointing flows down to the head, to the beard, to the skirt, to every congregate, every lay person, all the way out into the community. Father, we thank you for such an awesome privilege and such an awesome responsibility to shepherd over your people. Thank you for entrusting us, Father God. Now, Father God, equip us with all that we need so that we'll do a good work for you. For this, we give you alone glory, honor, praise, worship, adoration, and thanksgiving because you alone deserve it all. This I ask, this I pray, in the matchless, most holy name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and by his love. If you agree with that prayer, would you shout amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to have Pastor Dustin McCallum come, and he will be praying for the businesses. Amen. Just before I pray, I think that we should show our appreciation tonight to Pastor and Councilman Parker and to Minister and Councilwoman James for opening up City Hall. That our council and our mayor would say, open up the door to see the ball so that the people can pray. And we thank you both for your leadership. Lord God, we thank you tonight for the opportunity to gather and to pray. God, you've said that if your people would call upon your name, would humble themselves and seek your face, would turn from their wicked ways. Oh God, you would heal our land. And God, tonight our land needs healing. Oh God, we need healing. Jesus, we need you. And God, would, not, would you not let this be just an ordinary night, oh God? Would this not just be a simple night, oh God? Would this, this not just be a time when we would come and pray and go back to our homes and our churches, oh God? Would we seek you like never before, calling upon your name and asking you to come to our great city? Lord, we thank you for this city. God, we thank you for what you're doing in this place. We thank you for our leaders in City Hall. And we thank you for our leaders all across this city. And God, especially tonight. Yeah. We thank you for our businesses. Yeah, thank you, Lord. God, we pray for our businesses, oh Lord, tonight. From UWM to Lee Industrial. Uh -huh. Oh God, from Amazon to St. Joe's. Oh God, from M1 Concourse to McLaren and everybody in between, we pray that these businesses would flourish, oh God. Would they provide decent and well-paying jobs 
for our people, oh God. Would they give back to this city, oh God? Would they contribute, oh God? Would they provide revenue to our city so that we would have services for every resident that's here? We pray that these businesses would close. Do right by the people, oh God. Do right by you. But God, tonight we also pray for our small businesses. We thank you for the mom and pop stores. We thank you for the entrepreneurs. We thank you for the people that are trying to do better and be better and to uh, achieve wealth and financial stability. Oh God, would you give them perseverance, oh God? Would you give them grace, oh God? Would you give them favor, oh God, like never before? We pray that this would not be an economically disadvantaged city ever again, oh God. Would you pour blessings? It's supernatural miracles, oh God. Let this be a place where every single person would not just survive, but thrive, oh God. Not just so that we can be better and get better, but oh God, so that we can give you honor and glory and praise so that we can declare that you are the great God that has come so that we can honor you and worship you and lift you up and praise you like never before. Oh God, we do that this night, this Thursday night at 6 o'clock at City Hall. We praise you, oh God. We lift you up. God, we'll be doing with our entire lives to the honor of our Father, to the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's time to have Bishop Teresa Lee come and she's going to pray for education. Yeah. Amen. 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 God, in the glory, again, it's truly an honor to be here and to see so many people out there. My goodness, these young people. God, they have blessed me on tonight. And I'm sure each and every last one of us are blessed. And as a minister, uh, we probably just was saying between God for our president of the Minister of Fellowship, as well as the mayor of the city, allowing us to be here on tonight. Uh, as I've been instructed to pray for education. I was uh, just looking at a scripture, and it's one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. Uh, Proverbs. Proverbs is one of the fav my favorite personal books, and I was looking at Proverbs 4, where it talks about uh, 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 Solomon is telling his, uh, uh, he says, son, pay attention and listen to my words. He begins to teach him concerning wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And then if you go over there in Proverbs 5, it begins to talk the same time. He says, son, Kneel uh, down, and, and, and I need to instruct you on some things. I, I need to, to, to put something in your spirit. You, you need to learn it And then uh, uh, it goes over there in Hebrews 4, uh, starting at 4, 1 through 20, because they have received the instructions, but they didn't obey the instructions. Wow. They didn't obey the instructions, and because they didn't obey, the instructions God had already predestinated a tremendous destiny for their life. Yes. But because, and it was already predestined, it was waiting for them, but God was waiting for us to yes. obey. Wow. Yes. So he could release the greatness that he had on us. Yes. So, so, it's so important that we pay attention, even in our schools, and it's so important that teachers but understand, and, and, and the administrators, but understand their duties and responsibilities when it comes to imparting to us that we would be able to receive what God has already predestinated for us. Amen. So with that, so Father God, in Jesus' name, we come before you with our hearts open, our minds ready to learn. Bless us to embark on the journey of education. Yes. For knowledge is a gift from you. Yes. So far there's become. Yes. We lift up you, the education department. Yes. Mm. Uh, Father, we ask you to bless our education administrators and the staff with yes. wisdom, patience, and compassion. Yes. As they guide 
and support our students on their educational journey. Father, we ask you to grant them the strength to overcome challenges and to create a activity to, to have a gift to bring forth solutions to our circumstances. Yes, yes, yes. God, we pray that their dedication to excellence would inspire the students to reach their full potential yes, yes, yes. and become positive contributions to our society. Yes. Oh God, we ask you uh -huh. mm, that, 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 that uh, the influence of each of these departments would extend beyond the classroom walls, touching our lives, God, they would touch our families, they would touch our neighborhood, they would touch our community. God, it would bring unity and understanding and growth. Father, we ask you, when we ask for your guidance and your blessings upon those involved in education, that they will make they will continue to make a difference in the life of others. Father, I speak a word over these students. I thank you, God, for our education and department will work out lawyers. Yes. Where about doctors and engineers and computer scientists and teachers and data scientists? Oh my God, my, they will they be machine learners and they will know how to help here. Professionals, God, they will be entrepreneurs. They will make a difference. God, I pray right now that they will be human resources developers, program managers. God, we thank you, glory be to God, because our students are being trained correctly and that they are being obedient. Eyes have not seen. Yeah. Neither have ears heard. Neither have been entered into the hearts of man. God, would you have for us if we would just but obey? Yes. God, in Jesus' name, so we give your name glory again. Yeah. We give your name honor again. Yeah. And we thank you for our educational department because they will go forth and do Exports for the kingdom of yes, God. Yes, yes. In Jesus' name, if you go along and you agree with that prayer, prayer let everybody clap those hands and give God some praise. Hallelujah. This time you invite uh, Pastor Rodney Tolbert forward and he will be praying for our military. Amen. Uh, Grace and peace be unto you, from God the Father, God the Son, that will ride the Holy Ghost. All military personnel retired for active duty shall be saved. All mothers and fathers of military personnel that served in the service shall be saved. All wives and husbands that have a military family member that you have taken care of shall be saved. Now, all the missionaries of the world, would you stay? Everybody is a missionary. Will you stay? Man. The reason why I say this is because no matter what you have, if you don't have a strong military, you will not have a strong country. And everybody can go find their jobs everywhere, but one of the greatest jobs in the world is laying your life down for your brother. Wow. And as a military person, a golf ball bet, a disabled bet, last tour of duty I worked with for General Cole and Powell yes. during the golf war and in the Pentagon. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about me, I was thinking about my country wow. and making sure that my country was well taken care of. So I want to congratulate all of you that have military personnel that serve in the military today. May we stand up and salute you and say thank you for your service. Amen. In the book of Proverbs 22 and 4, it tells you that God blesses those that lay their life down for others. And we need to learn that the military should get the benefits that they deserve. Amen. They should not be begging for anything. Amen. They should not have to come home and fight to get their benefits. Amen. But when you have a military person coming to your church, remember they have had some problems serving the Lord. Before we go in prayer, I want you to look at a person that has post-traumatic stress disorder. 
I have traumatic brain injury. Mm -hmm. And I still can walk and talk. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. And the Bible said when Jesus was asked, how do we pray? He said, you pray in this manner. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. O gracious master, the giver of all good and perfect gifts, the military might of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the military general of David, Father, we call on you right now and say, Lord, we thank you for the military. We thank you for their service. We thank you for their dedication. We thank you for their sacrifice. And Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus that you bless every military person that's on Navy ships, that's on Marines, that is Air Force, that is the Coast Guard, that is the Army, that is any place that serves you in the name of Jesus. Well, we ask you to bless them and bless their families, bless their wives and bless their children. Because just because there's a service member, there is a loved one supporting that service member. Father, we love you now. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. We just bring them and lay them to you right now. Wherever they are, no matter where they're located in this world, you know where they are because you can touch them right now. Touch them and let them know that we're praying for them here in Pontiac. We pray for all of our military. Our Father, bless, sanctify, set us apart, use us to glorify the kingdom of God. And for Jesus Christ we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. This time I'd like to invite my parents, Pastor Lee and Yvonne Matlock, to come and pray for our city and to pray for our government. Amen. Father, we thank you for the city of Pontiac. God, I have believed for years there's going to be a great outpouring of your spirit in yes. this city yes. that will awaken us all, God, to your presence and your glory. Yes. I pray, oh God, for our government, Lord, to arise and be the governors, be the government, Lord, that you would have them to be, yes. that they would do their job that they would be holy men and women of God that would show an example to the rest of the world. Lord Jesus, our government needs a move of the Holy Ghost. And I pray, Lord, for the president, God, that you would transform him and he would be a man of God. And I pray for the Congress and the Senate, Lord, God, that they would call upon your name and seek your face for this nation, God. That we might have the blessing of the Lord in every street, every city, in the United States of America. God, we need a move in your spirit. We need revival to sweep every church, Lord. Bring them to the place, Lord, where you would have them to be. God, I thank you always for the city of Pontiac, Lord. God, I believe for years that there's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this city, God. And I still stand and say God's going to move mightily in this city and pour out His Spirit in every church. In the government, Yes, we need a move of the Holy Ghost in the government. That they would cry out to God for direction and guidance. Yes. To do what they need to do for the people of America, for the people of Michigan, and for the people of Pontiac, yes. my heart for years has believed that there's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this city. And I thank you, Lord, that I'm still here and I'm still believing for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. 
We pray for our families, we pray for our churches, and I just thank the Lord that we have a national day of prayer, that we can come together and pray. Yes. Yes. What an awesome yes. Yes. So as we pray for our city and our government tonight, we want to hold up our mayor, Lord. Yes, sir. Yes. We want to hold up, Lord, yes. our council members. Yes. Oh, we want to hold up the police department. Yes. Yes. Father, you said in your word, if any man lack wisdom, yeah. let him ask yeah. from God, because, Father, you will give her liberty. Yeah. And, Father, our mayor, our council members, yeah. our police department, they need wisdom from yes. you. Yes. And I claim in Jesus' name yes. that you will pour out wisdom upon them. Yeah. Yeah. And I the people, we thank you today. We have a God. Answers prayer. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father, we can cast every care for you. Yes. 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 Lord, we pray for our government today. Yes. Lord, as we see the protesters yes. at UCLA, yes. we see the protesters at the Ivy University. Yes. Yes. We don't know what to do, but God. Even as Shahaz said, yes. I don't know what to do with my yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Oh, yes. And that's what we need to do. We need to place our eyes on yes. you. Yes. We believe, Lord, that you're yes. going to take care of our nation. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. I don't care if you're pro Palestinian, pro Israeli, pro Democrat, pro Republican. We all need the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. 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 We need unity in our nation. We need unity because yes. the word of God says in Psalms yes. how good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together. Yes. Oh, yes, Lord, it's like that. Yes. Oh, it runs down here to the spirit. And then you said in your word, that's where you proclaim the blessing. Yes. Yes. Do you want yes. blessings today in your family? Do you want blessings in your nation today? Do you want blessings in your city? Then we need to dwell together in unity because yes. the word of God says in Psalms, that's where the Lord proclaims. Yes. 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 And we're going to pray again for Lord, this uprising. Oh, my Father, Lord, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are open. And we need you tonight. We want blessings in our nation. We want blessings in our city. We want blessings in our life. And I thank you right now, Lord. You said how good and pleasant it is for breath to dwell together in unity. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. It's oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. I'm reminded that the Bible says that the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. 
the world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the sea and established it upon the blood. Yeah. And so as I begin my prayer for the word, yes. I will remind us that we live in a time when the world feels like it is constantly on the brink of disaster. Natural disasters, political unrest, gun violence seems to be constantly in the news. It can be easy to feel helpless and hopeless in the face of all the turmoil that's going on. However, there's a God that sits high and looks low. There is a God that stretches from everlasting to everlasting. And there is one thing each of us can do to help promote peace in our society. And that is prayer. A prayer is a powerful tool that can, be, can help to bring about positive change. And so as we gather together in prayer for the word, I would ask that you would join me, Lord. We come in prayer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask for faith. So let us pray. In the name of God, our Father. First, Lord God, we pray for our planet. We pray for the protection of our planet and all of its inhabitants. We pray for those who are working to mitigate the effects of climate change and preserve our natural resources. We pray that we may all live in harmony with the earth. We pray for healing, Lord. We pray for those who are sick and for those who are lost loved ones. We pray for medical professionals and researchers as they work to find treatments and vaccines. We pray for those who are struggling with mental health issues. We pray for peace and what an end to the violence and conflict around the world. We pray for those who have been affected by war, terrorism, natural disasters. We also, we also pray for healing and unity in our own community. We pray for each other, Lord. We pray for that we may be kind and compassionate to those around us. We pray that we may stand up against injustice and be a force of good in the world. We, we pray, Lord God, that we'll be able to stand together with one heart and one mind in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, for peace that we have around the world. We pray for those in need. We lift up those who are in need. We pray for those who are hungry or homeless, those who are sick or suffering. We pray that you would provide for their needs and give them strength in difficult times. And finally, Lord God, we pray for our leaders. We pray that you would make that they would make wise decisions that would benefit all of humanity. Guide them as they strive to create a more just and peaceful world. Please give our leaders the strength and courage to stand up for what is right, even when it's difficult. Help them to lead by example and inspire others to do the same. Help our leaders to always act with integrity and honesty. Help them be truthful and sincere in their dealings with others. And Lord God, we come thanking you for the privilege of prayer, knowing that as we believe, it is already done. So thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing. And thank you for what you are doing, going to do in future. We know that you are able. We pray that you will, Lord God. Look down upon each and every one of us, Lord God, and grant us peace and comfort that we might find rest in this season. And in, in Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints of God say, Amen. 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 And amen. Yes, Laura Kelsey will be praying for arts, media, and entertainment. So what I'm supposed to be talking about is arts, media, and entertainment, and I will get there. But what I wanted to start out first was we're one community of faith together, amen? Amen. And when any of our brothers or sisters are hurting, we all hurt. Amen? Amen? And so this week, 
Uh, two of our pastors have joined the church triumphant, and so I wanted to hold up at those churches and the families that are involved and are grieving today because it's our job, right? That if someone, if we lose a pastor or we lose a friend, or that we reach out to one another and give prayer and and be there for them as the body of Christ. And so today I lift up uh, the family of the Reverend Dr. M. M. Scott of Eastside Church of God and his family, and I lift up uh, Kathleen James has been the acting pastor there uh, as of late, and we lift up you as well and all you're doing. We also lift up the family and the friends of the Reverend Glenn Chapel of the Zion Refuge Church of Pontiac. Please keep them in prayer, not just this week, but to come, because that's our job, is to hold them up. So now I'll do what I'm actually here to do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being right here with us today. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the blessings of God and the many ways that you use arts, media, and entertainment for your glory. So often, Lord, we focus on the negatives of arts, media, and entertainment. We know what's happening in the entertainment industry. We know what's happening in the modeling industry. We know what's happening in all sorts of dark places in our world. And yet we know, Lord, that you can move in places that we don't always understand. Yes. And we ask you, Lord, that the power of the Holy Spirit be upon all folks who work in these creative areas, Lord. Because we know that you can bring the message of God in place in ways that we don't always get. Yeah. And so today, Lord, we lift up those who use their gifts for the glory of God. Yes. Yes. And the ways they draw and, and dance and sing and praise your name. Yes. The way they even use technology is an art, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to work in, you, you to work in us and through us. We pray, Lord, for media. And at the same time we pray for media, we know, Lord, that this AI thing is out of control. And we ask you, Lord, that your will prevail. And your message be held out fast. And we ask you, Lord, to help us see the ways the Holy Spirit is going to move through our land through these means. Help us, Lord, to see the difference between what some bot is doing and what you are doing. And help us, Lord, to glorify you. Encourage us, Lord, tonight that as we go to the movies or listen to some music or uh, look to the entertainment industry that we see more and more ways to bring honor and glory to the mighty name of Jesus. And we ask you to encourage us. Don't let us get so beat down by the world that we stop to see the movement of God. And encourage us to stand up strong and to hold accountable what needs to be held accountable. And help us to be that body of Christ. Today and tomorrow and the day after. Do not let things get so out of control that we don't see you anymore. Help us, Lord, to see and stand up for the goodness of God and how you can use these things for your glory. We ask this all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. At this time, we invite Pastor Ryan Bobo to come up as he leads us in a prayer of repentance. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Would you go with me to God in prayer? Dear Father, we have asked for a lot this evening. 
but we don't want our sins to hinder our prayers. So we ask God have mercy upon us. Yes. We pray that you will bring us to a point of godly sorrow. That we will look at our sins and that we will not think it's okay because the world thinks it's okay. You have made us to be a peculiar people. A royal priesthood of a chosen generation, a holy people, God, you call us. And Lord, we have failed you over and over again. We keep getting drawn into what the world says is all right. But Lord God, we don't want to be like the world. We want to be like you. We want to be found pleasing in your sight. And so God, we we invoke Second Chronicles 7.14 again. As you said, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from them and forgive their sins and heal their land. Dear God, we pray right now that you will help us to turn from our wicked ways, our wicked thinking, our wicked actions, and help us, Lord God, not to make excuses for why we do what we do the way we do it. For Lord, we know that you are holy and you are righteous and you are just and that there is no way but your way. Lord Jesus, have mercy upon us and bring us to repentance. That daily we will look at ourselves and recognize we have not reached high enough to touch heaven, Lord God, that we are doing things our way, but God, we want you to do a new thing in us. Yes, God. <laughs> Holy God. Yes, Have mercy upon us. Yes, we hear David when he said, against you and you only have we sinned and we've done our wickedness in your sight. God, have mercy upon us. Yes, and help us not to be so self-righteous as to think that because we're not doing what somebody else does, that our wickedness is right. Lord, we know that our sin stinks like everybody else's sin stinks. And help us to turn our hearts unto you and to you alone. We need you, God. We seek your face right now. We pray that this nation will be called to repentance. With all of the fighting that's going on over everything, God, call us to repentance. Help us to turn from our wicked ways. God, help us to turn unto you. Yes. You and you alone are God. Yes. Lord, help us to turn from any false God. Any idol God. Anything that rises up and seeks to take the place of God. God, have mercy upon us today. We need you right now. God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us for what we have said and what we have done and how we have gone astray. And bring us home unto yourself. Lord God, help us to lay all of our sins at the foot of the cross of Jesus. Yes, but we pray that we will be washed, we will be cleansed, we'll be made brand new. God, have your way right now. But we do want to see revival. We do want you to do a brand new work. Holy Spirit, we do want you to come. But we know that until we get our hearts right, until we turn from our sins, God, we can't see revival. So we pray that you will help us to, to seek your face. To turn from our wicked way. Yes. God, we pray that you will be merciful unto us. Lord, we love you. We need you. God, turn this nation unto you. 
We ask it all in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We're privileged tonight to have our mayor here, Mayor Tim Grumma. We're going to invite him to come up and he's going to do the closing prayer. Amen. 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 Good evening. Thank you all so much for being with us this evening for this important event. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for convening us here at City Hall on this National Day of Prayer. We thank you for this important affirmation of our faith in you. We thank you for the leadership of the Oakland County Ministerial Fellowship, its president, our pastor, Councilman William Parker, and all of the officers of the Oakland County Ministerial Fellowship. We thank you for the leadership and service of all seven members of our city council. We thank you for the service of public officials at all levels of government. And we ask that you help all of us as elected officials to be guided by your love and to listen to and always serve the true needs of our community and residents. We ask that you help heal the rifts that divide the world and our community, that you improve the stability of God, that you help all of us first seek to listen and understand before we act. We ask that you guide us to seek that understanding so that we can find common ground. And that even as we may disagree with one another, that we act out of love and compassion towards one another. But perhaps most importantly, we act, ask that you gird our minds and our hearts and our spirits as we prepare to do the important work ahead. We ask that you remind us of our purpose here, that we better reflect your love in our daily lives, that your love for us is reflected in our love for one another, that you guide us by that love, that we ensure that we're looking after the least among us, those who face so many challenges in their daily lives, whether those challenges are poverty, drug abuse, other forms of addiction, homelessness, violent impulses, their personal struggles with family or friends, or employment struggles at work. We ask that you look after those whose struggles can sometimes feel all-consuming. That you lift their spirits. You help them to persevere and overcome and rise above those struggles and those challenges. We ask that you ensure that all of us act out of love. That your love for humanity is reflected in our daily acts of kindness towards one another. This National Day of Prayer needs to be more than just a single moment of coming together. Yes. It needs to prompt us to continue to come together, to continue to renew our faith every day and every moment, and to reflect that faith in our daily deeds. And so we ask that as we depart here today, that you will continually remind us and we need to have open minds, loving hearts, and helping hands. We ask this in your name. 
Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand clap for prayer. As I make it happen, I'm going to thank each and every one of you for coming and sharing with us on this national day of prayer. But prayer is not just about a day. But prayer is a lifestyle. Yes, it is. And so I would hope that as you leave this place, that you would at least remember at least on one day this year, prayer was held at City Hall. Amen. 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 And I want to thank each and every one. I want to certainly thank the two new groups that came and blessed us. We want to thank the New Spring Commissionary Baptist Church Impact Choir for coming and blessing us with their And I don't want to be too long. I just want to say thank you, each and every one of you, for coming. And I'll place you into the hand of our first, second vice president. Pastor Burgess. What a wonderful evening it has been, has it not? Oh, yes. To see all the different generations assembled in one place tonight, lifting up the name of Jesus yes. Christ. How are we? You just stand with me, we're going to have a, um, a benediction. But I just want to pronounce a blessing upon the children. Is that all right? Is that all right? Father God, in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name. Lord, I thank you that we can come boldly before the throne of grace. And God, we can make our petitions known unto thee. Lord, I thank you for every generation that's been represented in City Hall tonight. God, I ask that they would rise to the top. Lord, I ask you to bless them going in and bless them going out. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would enlighten them to your truth. I pray, Lord, that their test scores would begin to escalate. Father God, I pray, Lord, that their math skills, God, would come to the top. I pray, Father God, the plans that you have for them shall be, they shall succeed. I thank you, Lord, as they seek you, God, they're going to see that you begin to work all things together for their good. Father, I thank you for our educational system, but I pray, Lord, that this is going to be a new day in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that we've got doctors and lawyers, we've got nurses, God, we've, got, we've got politicians, we've got the president and the, and, and the um, mayor of, the, of our city, Lord, that's going to come up from the seed of this ground. I thank you, Lord, that our children are going to know that you are the true God. They're going to know that they can put their confidence in you. They're going to know, Lord, as they seek your face, God, you're going to move out the mountains and you're going to make the right places straight. Oh, I praise you and I thank you, God, that you are awesome. Lord, we can trust you. And God, for every mom and dad that brought their kids to this place today, I speak a double portion blessing upon them. I pray, Lord, that they would rise up with true strength and power. I pray, Lord, that the word of the Lord would be in their mouth. I pray, God, every day that they would lay hands on their kids and they would prosper. Oh, I thank you, Lord, that we're going to be the change that our city needs. Because, God, we're going to put our trust in there. So, Father, I thank you for the 73rd National Day of Prayer. I thank you that we've assembled in our city, God, declaring that you are God and there is no other. Oh, we worship you and we adore you and we magnify your name. I thank you, Lord, that even greater things are yet to come. In Jesus' name, and everyone said amen. Amen.